it's nearly the middle of May. There is no frost forecast now until, well, as far as my forecast goes, which is up to the 24th of May. So we should be past my last frost date, which is the 1st to the 10th of May. So it's time to do the most exciting thing that I've been looking forward to, which is get this set up to put my tomatoes in. I cannot believe that the time is already here to have summer crops growing in this polytunnel. And it is what it's all been about. This whole nine months process has been about the dream of opening these doors to see cucumbers and tomatoes and all sorts. And, and it's here already. It seems like we've gone from winter, bang, almost into summer because obviously with how the weather's been. So what have I got to do? As you can see, I've still got all of my fleece in here from winter. So I'm going to take this out, take all of these canes out, which no doubt will come in handy over summer in the garden. But I'm going to be leaving the floating shelf in just for another couple of weeks. The stuff on here that's just not quite ready to be planted out into the garden yet. And I don't have enough room in the greenhouse to put all of what's left in here in the greenhouse. So that'll just stay here for a couple of weeks, but it won't be long now. And in fact, we might not take it out completely. Someone suggested in a previous video about taking this up against the crop bars and securing it up there over summer. So it won't be in the way of the crops, but also it means we don't have to go and store it somewhere else. And then I might actually be able to tie crops up to it instead. So I've not ruled that out yet. I'm thinking that might be a good idea. I'm going to be leaving the hanging baskets in the back of the polytunnel again just for another week or so. As there's no frost forecast, they would have been okay in the garden. But I just think giving them the best start to be more established before they head out into the big wide world. And, and that's it. Radishes aren't ready to be harvested, so they'll have to stay in. There's garlic in the back that can stay in. All of these onions can actually come out now. They were just spare, so however big they are, that's it. They can come out. So yeah, let's get cracking. spring onions here were planted on the 17th of August last year and to be honest I forgot about them for a lot of the time over winter because they were practically covered up by the fleece I had in the centre when I had the desk here. Wow look at that! I did not expect an onion harvest like that from these. They were all just the spare sets that I've put in. And I got told that you could have the red barons as sort of a big spring onion. So that's why I planted them anyway. I think these are white Lisbons. I can't remember now. It just says spring onion on the tag. But look at those. And yes, they've been in since August. But wow, what a lot of onions I've got to process later. Well, that didn't take long to get empty. Unfortunately, I can't get these road pins out of the ground. I'm going to have to wait on Duncan for that job, but he is having his feet done by the chiropodist at the moment. He's been pampered, so he can't come just now. So I'm going to go ahead and amend this soil. I'm just going to chuck some compost on top. There was plenty of manure put in here at the back end of last year underneath the original compost. And I'm going to put a fresh layer on top, and then I'm going to start thinking about what to do with the tomatoes. I really feel like I want to put fish blood and bone in here, but I'm just frightened of attracting foxes and the like to try and get their way into the tunnel so unfortunately I think I'm going to just rely on normal tomato feed and what's already in here so let's get this soil in it's heavy it's big bales I've only got four of these bales so for now I'm going to have one and a half on each side and one in the middle. That's the hope. And I can always go and get some more if it's not enough. The thing I hate about these bales is it's hard to get it out without making a complete and utter mess. I'll just spread it out a little bit and then I shall go and get my rake. I think I need another half a bag on it. I'm going to carry on and top dress all of the beds and I will catch you when I've finished.
Well, that's all of the beds topped up. Can't deny there wasn't a bit of angsty ranting from me. I hate those bales. It's so difficult to empty the compost out of the packaging in such a confined space without making a mess. So I did get a bit in the wood chip. I'm going to give the compost quite a bit of water before I actually plant anything into it because it is quite dry in here. Currently recording 36 degrees, which has been pretty average for the entire week. We've finally got this weather. Before I give it a water and get round to planting things in here, I will just run through how I'm going to attempt to support the crops that I'm growing in here this year. I've had a few issues with how the design and layout of my beds versus the polytunnel is causing me with how I want to use the beds. So I'll just show you what I mean. I have run through the problem that I have with the polytunnel in relation to how I was going to support the summer crops in my polytunnel regret video that I did in November, which I'll link at the end of this video. So you can go ahead and watch that before you decide to buy a polytunnel yourself so you can maybe not make the same mistakes that we have. I'm standing on the front edge of this bed. When we spec this polytunnel, we spec it with the crop bars with the idea of being able to either run a wire or a piece of wood between it to then tie down to the crops. But as you can see, if I do the tightrope walk along the front edge of the bed, this is the edge of the crop bar. It doesn't come far enough over. The crop bars aren't wide enough for me to actually put them where I expected to put them. I thought they would come more to here. So I'm already at the front edge of the bed. That led me to think that maybe we could tie into this brace bar which is what I think I'm going to have to do but we've skinned this so tight that actually the plastic sort of sinks between the hoops which means it actually touches these bars so if we'd have put these lower down that would have brought this bar further to the back of the bed which would have been rather handy so I'm going to play about I'm either going to fasten from here or run something through the storm braces here because that would be further to the back of the bed. I'm going to have a bit of a play, but I'll show you what I'm hoping to use, which I think will be softer against this plastic as well. This is what I've bought to make the support with. I'm not sure it's going to be good enough. In fact, it might be too thick. I think that's the problem more than anything. So this is eight mil paracord. My plan has been that I'm going to be able to tie it on And then just let it hang down into the ground that I should be able to make this loop a bit better than that. My hope is that by making this loop at the bottom that I should be able to dig a hole like this when I'm about to plant my tomato or whatever it is I'm planting and either trust the root ball to do the job or peg this in the ground I need to be a bit tighter than this obviously peg this in the ground and then I'll be able to wind what I'm growing up a bit for support before I tie all of these up I've also got halos to use now I decided that they would help me space things out but also they would help with watering in the polytunnel because if I went away then Duncan would be able to water the plants for me. So obviously I need to be able to run the strings according to the halos as well. Right, I think with a slight staggering that I'll be able to fit 11 on one side. It's not that many tomato plants really, is it? I'm going to have them in the middle as well, but the other side is going to be the cucumbers, the loofers, the melons. I've done the first few on this side, thought you don't want to see me do them all. Making it a bit longer than it needs to be. I'll leave it. 
hopefully there's enough to do the last one here. Oh, plenty. So as you can see, my fear that I wouldn't be able to tie into here because it would be too far forward in the bed actually isn't proving true. And once I've given it a go, it is working. I've also strung a piece of paracord behind me above the two brace bars so that I can put one on the L shape of the bed here. The bottom of the halo has tiny holes in it and this water slowly drips into the soil. I'll show you more on this one. You can see the spikes with holes in it to let the water through. And that's how I'm watering my plants this year. Somewhere in this jungle are my 16 plants for the polytunnel. I have all of these here, I have these here, and there's some more behind me. Now, I also have a single moneymaker plant, which I didn't sow, I've bought that, but that is going in the pepper greenhouse, because that was my father-in-law's greenhouse, and that's all he used to grow in it. So as a bit of a, a nod to him, we're going to have a single moneymaker plant for Wallace in the other greenhouse. I think I need to try and get a single one of every variety, and then see what else I'm going to grow after that. So, I'm going to go and put them outside. I don't know how to choose. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to discard what turns out to be the best one of the lot. And I think, why didn't I have more than one of those? And then I've got three of something else that I thought was going to be great. And it turns out to not be what we really wanted. And I think that's the thing. I'll feel more confident next year with all the different types of varieties, which ones that we're going to prefer growing. These are the chosen ones. These are my outdoor ones. I have Honey Delight, Divinity F1, Crimson Crush, Rose Crush, and I can't remember what this one was now. Oh, a San Marzano. I'm growing those outside. And then in the polytunnel, we have on the end there, Mocker's Cherry Round. These two are crushed half. And they've never they've not been the healthiest seedlings, so hopefully they'll be okay. This is Look de Choix, which is a multiflora, honeycomb F1. This one that's now decided to lean over since I moved it is burlesque. Then I've put in two Queen of the Nights, two Black Beauty, one Cherry Brandy Wine, which has the potato leaf. And then I have these little ones, Blue Bayou, Aichi First, which again hasn't been the healthiest of seedlings all the way through. And then I have San Marzano and this is the last thing that I germinated, great yellow blue. Oh, and I have a honey delight in the corner there. So they've only recently been sown. And I have a few spares in here, going to see if Duncan's cousin Andrew would like any. If Andrew doesn't want any of them, I'll probably just keep them to grow on for a little bit, just to make sure that the ones that I'm putting in the polytunnel now do survive, so I'd have a few spares if they don't. Tomatoes 2024, it's a proper go, isn't it? I can't wait to get them in the tunnel. Let's go and do it soil in it that's not going to help it is it and the idea now is that as she grows she can get wrapped around the string to support her <laughs> end as I can because I don't trust myself and the process because it's my first time doing it I am using these little pegs so I'll put it in this one is honeycomb f1 I think we need it to be a bit deeper than that. Hang on a minute. Now. Very 
come back up. Pass the halo through the string and then carefully bring the lead through now this is exciting this is the very last thing that we're going to plant today and this is lupus the lupus those of you that have been following me on instagram know that i sowed this back in january and i have two lupus the other one is called lex lupus if this lupus the lupus lives then i will bring lex lupus outside in another week or so i'm going to put him in the corner already tied the knot that I need in here and put the little clip or peg on it. Right, so that's pushed in the ground. Now it's time to get him in that hole without breaking him. So he's getting a little handful of fish blood and bone in there. I'm almost tempted to break the pot and cut the pot off of him. Oh dear. Well, he needs to tip up, doesn't he? Hang on. I don't know how to hold him. This is the bit I've been worried about all along with him getting so big. He's literally got to tip upside down to pull the pot off. Thank you. Right, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I knew it'd fall in the hole. Wait, wait, wait. You start lifting him up. Oh, Godspeed, Lufa. Godspeed. He's probably a little bit low, actually. Oh, there we go. Come on, smell this garlic now. I'm standing here. I'm just going to try and get as much soil around as I can. Now the big challenge comes in trying to spread the halo. So if you just hold that. Right. Hopefully. I need to do that side myself. I can see these cracks in them somehow. Oh, I think he's in. I think he's in. Well, the very reason I've bought you, Duncan, is if you can tie that knot up for me, please make it tight for him. Hopefully, he'll be happy here. Fingers crossed. So this is it. The polytunnel is ready for summer. I haven't planted the tomatoes in the middle yet. I am going to make that decision about the shelf, as I said earlier. I'm leaving them to grow on. They are the smallest ones anyway. But I have done some companion planting. There's basil and marigolds and a little bit of dwarf cosmos dotted about as well. <gasps> I'm really excited. I don't know why, but it really feels like this is the start of the season fully now. To be able to open these doors and see these tomatoes hopefully start shooting up now. Wow, so exciting. Thank you for sharing the journey with me. The next video is going to be a plot tour. Quite a few things have changed that I haven't filmed, so it'll be interesting to show that to you. So I'll catch you then. Look after yourselves. Bye.